Hey, what's up? It's Kim. You might know me from Power Breakfast Show from Power 98. But today we're here on the third episode of The Scape Show. Now, this show is fantastic. It's run by youths for youths, talking about issues that matter to youths today. This episode, I'm super, super excited to be talking to two fantastic girls because they are singers. Now, you might not know this, but when I was a kid, before I started in radio, I really, really wanted to be a singer. I used to join competitions, I used to sing for my family and my friends, but when I realized that everyone was using earplugs, I decided maybe it's not for me. So today, I'm going to be talking to two people who are singers and they're doing this for their careers. Fantastic stuff. I can't wait for you to meet them with me. Right now, though, one of them is going to perform for us on the stage right now, please welcome Jasmine Soko. for that wonderful performance. Very cool stuff. Please come and join us together with Joey on stage. Now, you guys are fantastic. Joey will be performing later on. But first off, I want to really get to know you guys. So both of you, both of you are really fascinating. Uh, Jasmine, I've seen your YouTube videos. Joey, I've been watching you since your cover days. Okay, so I really need to know uh, how all this started, how you guys became performers. So, um, you know, growing up, I think music is always one of the things that gives me a lot of fulfillment. 
So I started with guitar and singing, but I'm not really good with instruments, so ultimately I discovered electronic music. So you can kind of create everything you want by tweaking the sound waves. So yeah. Right, okay, and for Joey? Um, for me, my parents both play music, so I grew up with a lot of music at home. We sang a lot together, and I think that definitely contributed to my love for music. And my dad taught me the guitar, so oh, I think that's so there's sweet. a yeah. And and you know, both of you are now performers. Uh, for Jasmine, you have this image going right with the visor and everything. For Joey, I really like the aesthetic, the hair and the rings and all that. So I gotta ask, did you guys come up with this as a concept? Did you literally sit down and go, "This is what I want to look like"? So for me, it was kind of working on the first music video, which was 1057. And then the concept of the video was about a person who is lost, going around to find a missing person, only at the end that the person she is finding is herself. So for that narrative to run on, you need a mask. Yeah, so at the end of a music video, supposedly, the, the person is supposed to take down the mask. But then me and my friends were just doing it for fun. So we were like, hey, let's be abstract. <laughs> let's take that scene out. And then like, the music video just kind of like, makes no more sense in that, you know? But um, the mask thing went on. And, and how long has it been from when you first released that video until now? It's about a year plus. So you've had this on for a year? So I changed. <laughs> <laughs> so the second music video was actually a visor, and then the third one is a VR goggle. Yeah. But no so game is running la, on the on the. No, so VR. it's total darkness. So you can't see right with the goggle on it during the video. No. Wow. Can can you see me right now? Yeah. How, how many fingers? <laughs> Hold on. How many? Um, three, two. <laughs> Maybe, okay, almost there, almost there, yeah. So, do you get like fans recognizing you without like the VR goggles and all the visor and everything? Normally, no, because I still go to school and I, I hear people like, uh, used to be this quite, quite a cute guy sitting beside me in school. Oh. <laughs> and then um, he, he told me he likes Jasmine Soko without knowing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I oh my gosh, <laughs> what a story! Did you just show up like, I'm Jasmine Soko? <laughs> yeah, you put I on like your eye mask tell. or something. <laughs> I, I didn't tell. I'm just like, hmm. So does he know now? Yeah. Okay, Eventually. okay, all right. And, and Joey, what about you? So you have this really like cool aesthetic going on. I really, really like it. Was it something you planned as well for your, for your image? I don't think so. No, it wasn't anything I planned. I mean, the whole going blonde thing was very... I didn't plan it at all. Yeah, I'm a, I, I like to do things randomly. If I feel like doing it, I'll just do it. Um, so it just happened and I've just, yeah, I think this is just... So this Things is you. That I gravitate towards. Yeah, this is me. Right. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, for Joey, you tend to, you know, perform and write songs that are a bit slower, very emotional, very meaningful. So when I listen to them, I, I've listened to the covers. Of course, those are the songs that other people are writing, right? Now, when you're creating this album that you're working on or you have released recently, what kind of messages and, and themes do you find yourself writing about? Always about love. I feel like, I mean, I'm a very, very emotional person, sometimes too emotional that I can't burden my partner with all that, you know? I can't think out loud like that because sometimes you can't take things back. Um, so whenever things happen to me, I go to songs, go to music. If I can't listen to a certain song that will help me get through it, I write. Um, and most of my experiences that are painful or happy have all been translated into songs. So I think that is why most of the songs are more sad than happy or they sound more emotional because that's when I write the most, yeah. I do have a question. Have you ever written about something, whether it's a partner or a friend or a family member, you know, and, and you didn't tell them that you're writing about this, but when it came out and they heard the song, they kind of knew it was about that. Was there ever any like awkward moments where you had to? Oh yeah. Really? Yeah. Can you tell us a story? Um. Okay. So something happened at home with my family, and it hit me very badly. Um. And I wrote that song specifically about my mom, and uh, I performed it at my recital for the first time. So I remember talking about it. I said, uh, "Okay, this next song is something that I wrote about something that happened at home." And 
she didn't really dare to talk to me about it. My, she, she talked to my dad about it. And then my dad later on asked me, she's like, oh, you know, mommy asked me, is the song about me? So I think she knows. But I guess in a, a beautiful way as well, I kind of communicated my feelings to her. You know, I mean, I, while I do communicate my feelings to her, sometimes you can't get everything out. And with a song, it, it speaks to you in ways that a normal conversation can't. Right, I yeah. hear that. Yeah, thanks for sharing that with us. No, no problem. Uh, for Jasmine, your music, well, I'm taking this from your image, okay? The image is very avant-garde, a little bit off-kilter, right? So in terms of the songwriting itself, what kind of themes are you bringing out? What kind of experiences are you bringing into the music that you write? I guess, like, it's just a lot of what I experienced growing up in a society where it's very rigid and, um, you know, where art is not a direction you would automatically like choose growing up. I think a lot of songs started out just surrounding that kind of theme, you know, loneliness, being lost and not feeling like you belong. Yeah, and the whole like, I really hate how, you know, this society is so defined by numbers. What do, what do you mean actually that you face resistance in this society when you try to do your art? Like, um, you know, like growing up, you really want to be a musician, but then there are always this few career paths that, that are just viable and you will, you are expected to do, you know. It seems to be like a, a very planned out path for you to follow as you progress and you age, you know. But it's kind of like restricting and that regardless of how much hard work and effort I put into making art, you know, my parents would just view it as a hobby because it's art. Is that still the case? Are they still viewing it as just a hobby? Um, so lately they have been a bit more like open, which, which kind of surprises me. Uh, yeah. That's because you've been working hard as well, right? Showing them that this is more than just a side thing. You can do this for work. Yeah. yeah. And I actually think it's very interesting that you mentioned this because I want to ask a question right now. And it's the reason why we have audience members here with us today. Uh, we want to ask, when you guys perform, right? So for Jasmine, I understand that you are still uh, promoting yourself in Singapore. You're very much a local artist right now. For Joey, I understand you have plans to move overseas sometime this year, right? Very soon. So let, let, let's see the difference between the two plans, right? For Jasmine, do you face any difficulties right now as a, as a local artist trying to promote yourself? Um, I guess there will always be like some form of um, setbacks along the way. Things like the, the market not being big, you know? And um, sometimes, I guess, when it comes to like identity as well, just because like in Singapore is bilingual, right? And um, what are the themes or topics that just like nail you down as a Singaporean and how do you express that and share with people? So there are these kind of things that um, I learned to negotiate when it comes to identity. But um, generally, I guess because I spend a lot of time at home just making music, so I'm not, yeah, I'm not really bothered by a lot of other things. You kind of focus on your passion, right? Just do what you want to do. Yeah. That's great. And, and Joey, you're deciding to move overseas. Is this because of, of you know, certain restrictions here? Or, or what's the mindset behind it? Actually, my move, uh, I've always known that I don't want to settle down here. So contrary to popular belief, my goal is not to be like a successful singer, a successful musician. My goal is to be a mom. That is, that is my dream and that's what I've been wanting to work towards since I was a kid. So thinking about the future of my children, thinking about my family in the future, um, I don't want to raise my kids here. Growing up, I never really liked staying in school always and then being restricted again um, by art, you know, by, by you have to do math, you have to do science. If you're not good at math, you better be good at science. If you're not good at English, you better be good in Chinese, right. you know. Um, art is always secondary. So you finish your, your main exams first, then you focus on art. Art can't be your, your main it excelling can't be a, point. You're good at math? or dance. It's not like that. They're not yeah, the same level, no, right? No, it's not. Okay. Yeah, I understand that because when you go out into the working world, you need, you know, to understand numbers, you need to understand concepts, but at the same time, art fuels my life. You know, I feel happy with art and just in general, I want to move 
So that, and then music also, I feel like where I'm moving to New York is a, is just the heart of community and expression. And it's just, I feel like it's, New York is like Singapore, but with no barriers. And I guess that's yeah. the question, right? Why can't Singapore, what do we have to do in Singapore to make it more like New York? So people like you and Jasmine decide to, you know, flourish here, right? So let's bring this over to the audience for a second. You guys, thanks for coming down, by the way. You guys look really nice today. Uh, I see you have the Ya Ona little like circle thingies with you. Yeah, the signs. So let's ask a quick question, okay? Do you guys listen to local music? Ya yeah or nah? Let's see the responses. For the back row, can we put that up a little bit so we can see your responses? Higher. So front <laughs> row, two ya's, one na. Back row, mostly ya's, one na. Okay, sure. So let's get someone who said ya. Yeah. Can we get them a, a mic for the audience? And uh, let's, let's ask you, why is it that you listen to local artists? What is it about local musicians that you enjoy compared to maybe someone from the US or the UK? So hi, what's your name? My name's Iyad. Hi, Iyad. Hi. And uh, why do you enjoy listening to local artists? Because uh, it's something that uh, people in Singapore just created for themselves and also for the other people to listen to. Because I also have family members that were and are on the music industry, especially uh, my late uncle, Buddy Fao, and also my cousin that is in the band, Buddy Hide for 53A. And uh, I listen to a lot of local music since young. I listen to them on the radio and I see them that they're just as good as the international artists. So I thought uh, with the support from the fans like ourselves, it can make themselves really successful as the artist internationally. Right, I hear that. And I heard you have a, a question for one of the guests here, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, so who's your question directed towards today? Jasmine. Okay. How young do you start in singing and how did this develop from there? Like, uh, do you need to go through vocal classes or CCA? Um, so I started music around um, 13 years old, but I wasn't really like dead set on it just because I didn't know it could be a career path and um, been really very passionate about it. I went to vocal classes but it didn't work out because like, I don't know, I feel like it's just suppressing my individuality. Yeah, so um, overall I spend a lot of time in front of my computer watching YouTube videos to learn how to make um, electronic music. Yeah, I'm a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we have uh, uh, my friend at the back over there. What's your name, buddy? Mendel. All right, so Mendel, you have a question I heard for Joey, right, today? Um, yes. Um, so why, why, why New York and not um, LA or some other countries? That's a very good question. It was a question that I was asking myself while I was making the decision. So I was um, deciding between New York and LA. Um, New York was my first choice because I went there in February and I fell in love with the place. I felt very at home there. Um, but then I didn't want to just base my career path decision just because I love New York. You know, I've never been to LA. I do have friends who are now in LA. So I spoke to my friend Daphne Ku, who is in LA now and she's doing music there. We had a little chat and she made sure to ask me what I want to get out of my move there. And based on what I wanted, which is to kind of meet people, collaborate with people, and do shows, little shows everywhere, not so much business. So that's why I decided to go with New York. And also, my heart was there. So I decided to do that. Maybe I'll venture into LA sometime, but New York for now. Yeah. All right, thanks very much, guys. So we're going to go back to the guests for a second, and we're going to ask you something. Um, I want to know about your experiences in terms of your current music journey, so recent stuff. Uh, Joey, I know that you released an album recently, so can you tell us more about that? Well, getting to release that album was something that I've been wanting to do for a very, very long time. Uh, it felt like a, a long time coming personally because I've been holding it back, you know, years and years before I would say, okay, this year I'm releasing blah, blah, blah songs. I'm releasing one single, at least two singles, but it, it was very hard for me to get to a point where I felt like the songs were ready. So it feels good. It feels so good to, to be able to say that the songs are ready to 
to be out to the world, let people hear. Um, I got to work with a very amazing Bunny Hidir on the album. He produced it, arranged it, and they just I worked with amazing musicians, and you know it, it was really really great. So it feels good for the album to be out there, and I can't wait to make my next one. And where can we find it if we want to listen to Joey? Which it's is on the name Spotify, of the album? yeah, Spotify, Spotify, iTunes, Bandcamp. Yeah. All right. So that's your album out recently. I really hope it does well. It's, it's beautiful when you put something out that has your heart in it, right? And you feel Thank happy you. that yeah. it's finally out there. Mm -hmm. Jasmine, I do want to ask you about something you did last year. I know it's not that recent, but you performed for Ultra. Is that right? So what was that experience like? Um, I would like to tell you it's really cool and all, which it, it is. But um, I actually lost my voice a week before. Oh. So I couldn't even talk. And um, I was recovering so how does that work? How do you do it on the so day itself? On the day itself, I am like um, about 85% recovered. So my mucus was flowing out of my nose <laughs> and while I was performing. <laughs> so I actually ran around a lot, turned around just to like wipe it off. Like an extra right filter, inside. right? Like yeah. A noise filter. <laughs> so I move around a lot. So that, that's kind of like an improvement. Yeah. All right. Okay. So both these girls are doing fantastic stuff. As you can see, they're both very interesting, very talented, and of course, very motivated to do what they love. So thank you very much, girls, for hanging out with me today. Uh, Joey, it's your turn to perform for us. Are you ready? Yeah? Before we do that, though, I do want to watch something that I heard you prepared for us. Is that right? So what do we have today in the video? I filmed a little day in the life uh, just to show you guys a little bit of what it's like to work and then go to a gig and perform and stuff like that. Okay, yeah. let's see that. Hi everyone, my name is Joey and I'm doing a day in the life. Today is Saturday. I start most of my mornings with a call with my boyfriend. We are in a long distance relationship, so I try and squeeze in as much time as I have with him even if it's just being on the way to work. I usually teach at an art studio from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Saturdays. So I had a little bit of a late start to the day. Took a cab, got my guitar for the gig later, came here. We have Go Beat Festival later on after work. So after this, I will be heading over to Scape. I'm having breakfast right now. Um, anyway, class is starting soon. I'll try and film little bits of the day with the kids. And yeah, let's go. This sandwich is so good. It's the uh, 7-Eleven egg and cheese. Hi, so I just finished three classes with the kids. It was very tiring, but fun. And I'm sitting in the storeroom. Right now, just waiting for my friend Charmaine to come, and we'll head to Globeat together. Ah, we're finally here. This is Charmaine. Hey, we're at Globeat. I mean, we're at Escape, but we're going to Globeat. How do you feel about this? Oh, it's great. <laughs> okay. 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 Bye. What do you think of the set, Grayson? I think it was so good. Uh, say it properly again. How was my set, Grayson? It's nice, Okay. I'm going to say it properly next time. Get play after, and they did, they did really well. Hey guys, so as you can tell, I'm home now. It is currently 3.14 a.m. I got home from Globeat pretty late. Um, I hung out with a bunch of friends. So the last time we spoke, we were at Singwon Cafe and we were having dinner. And after that, we went back to Globeat, caught my life set, which was amazing. And then we hung out for a while and then went home and now I am awake because I'm editing this vlog. I hope this has given you a little bit of insight as to 
how my Saturdays usually go if I have a gig and even though it's really tiring, it's fun the gig went really well and it was really really awesome one thing I really love about playing shows here and like you know being part of the scene is just the community like it's just great to have people who see things your way and are passionate about the same things that you are and you get to hang out with them on nights like that and then support your friends who are on stage you know you come off stage you know you support another friend together when you get off stage it's like such a nice feeling thanks for watching um yeah bye Okay, so I have a question for both Joey and Jasmine. Uh, when you guys perform, I'm sure you guys get nervous, but how do you handle stage fright? Like, do you ever get like, oh no, I'm very nervous for this gig? Uh, I, I still haven't mastered dealing with stage fright. Actually, to be very honest with you, it's gotten worse for me. Uh, before every performance, I get so sweaty in my palms and I don't ever perspire very much. I get the worst stomach aches. And sometimes I get dizzy. It gets very, very, very bad for me. And then my band will start panicking. Like, actually, they're fine, right? We practice, we're fine. Then they see me panic, and they're like, yeah, I can also. <laughs> but um, the moment we start, it goes away. So I think that's just what I have to deal with for now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's always the moment it starts that it goes away. But so does the visor help with stage fright? Yeah, <laughs> actually, it does, you know. Because um, I also wear in here. So when I'm performing, right, I just hear the track really loud in my voice, in my own ears, right? And then I have this, like, visor blocking my visuals, and the lights are really dim as well. So everything kind of, like, sets this whole setting, like, you're an alien out of space. So, yeah, so I guess that's how I deal with it. Thanks very much for sharing your stories with us. You know, I'm really, really happy to got to meet them, got to find out more about the journey behind being an artist, especially a female artist here in Singapore. So thank you very much, guys. Right now, though, speaking of performances, Joey is going to perform for us as well. I heard you have something pretty special for us today, right? Is it something new? Uh, it's off the album. It's a song called You. And I wrote this about just having a crush on someone. Oh, yeah. Relatable to all of us here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, girls. I'll see you again soon. Joey, let's get you ready for your performance. Uh, everyone, big round of applause for Joey, who's going to perform for us today. All right, and thank you so much for joining us on the third episode of The Skate Show. Once again, my name is Kim, and of course, you can listen to The Power Breakfast Show on Power 98 every weekday morning, 7 to 10 a.m. Now, of course, uh, to find out more about The Skate Show, I do want you to go online, Facebook and Instagram pages. You can also find out how to be a part of our lovely audience here. That is Scape SG. Again, once again, Facebook and Instagram, Scape SG. All right, see you in the next episode. And once again, welcome, Joey!
too hard to think that you somebody oh so new is somebody I can't refuse you've got mystery written all over you you give me feelings I can't diffuse you make me so